I've been working today in our six acre site and I realize this is a great opportunity to take a look at some of these beautiful flowering shrubs and trees. There are all sorts of varieties of peaches and apricots and even almonds and really highlight in particular the beauty and the wonder of the Nanking cherry. So this will be a little floral wander for today. It's sweet, it feels like the sun came out just in time to start filming this. Oh, there it goes behind a cloud, never mind. <laughs> We've got these shrubs that are all throughout this landscape quite lovely. We've been adding shrubs and trees since 2009. It's 2014, so this is the 15th growing season, and a lot is going on, a lot to talk about, and a little hard to know where to begin. But maybe I want to start with the apricot. We have some apricot trees here that were planted back in 2009, so again, they're coming into their 14th or 15th year of life. Um, smaller numbers of flowers on this one. This is actually a tree that's somewhat in decline, and I think we're gonna let it pass on. It had a weird form to begin with, um, and this horse chestnut showed up a number of years ago, and it's really beautiful, it's pretty unique in the landscape, so I think we may actually let this particular apricot disappear. But then we've got this absolutely phenomenal four-legged beauty going up and up and up and up. It's a little hard to capture on film just how much uh, beautiful flower is up there. If it was a little bit sunnier, a little bit warmer, I would imagine we'd see a lot more bees up there, but hopefully the pollination will be good. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we don't get a freeze and have the fruit set be interrupted. That's a, a common challenge with apricots in this landscape. This is actually a child of the one I just looked at with a little bit of a uniqueness. They've got these beautiful, more pink flower notes happening. Let's see if I can get that actually zoomed in. Really showy and lovely plant being here and very easy to grow from seed. We've offered these plants in the past through our website, but we've just had crop failures for the last few years, so it's a little bit harder to get them growing when we don't have the seed. But if we get it this year, we'll have seed uh, over winter, and next year we can grow a whole bunch of these in air prune boxes. A lot of diversity in the form and color of the flowers, a little bit of the timing of the flowers. That's partially about the microclimate that they're in. You know, these feel a little bit slower and behind, but they're starting to do their thing. But just so many flowers on these apricots, very, very early. Wonderfully early, a little bit risky early. Speaking of amazingly early and quite beautiful flower, this is our almond tree, our Hall's Hardy Almond in peak floral glory. I'd like to grow some more of these throughout the landscape. And we're noticing that we can prune them up. You can see this is a very upright form. I actually pruned a lot away from underneath so that we can grow blackberries, we can have sorrel, we can have um, sweet sicily, we can have gooseberry, all sorts of other characters underneath this almond. And then you get up into the canopy and you realize you got a whole bunch of crop potential. Again, so long as we don't get a good freeze. But that's a really nice opportunity since it's not a soft fruit that you harvest from a plant like this. It is the hard seed inside. We can allow it to just go up and up and up and grow some crops underneath and then just shake it in the fall to do our harvest. Take a wander over here to the main character for this story, the Nanking cherry or Prunus tomentosa. I've spoken about this plant a number of times in other videos. I'll link as we go throughout. This is a suckering diminutive shrub, about six feet to 10 feet tall and just packed with flowers. Don't mind <laughs> the beauty, the beauty of the flower juxtaposed to the ugliness of a hand. What are you going to do? But these are some uh, phenomenal flowers, good spring browse for the bees, and then they'll turn into, I call it cherry on the cob. I'll see if I can find a good picture to splice in. But the fruit set is so dense and the complexity of the plant is so intense that we'll come through and use pruners to snip off fruit loaded branches in the summer and sit down in the shade with kids and adults alike and do cherry on the cob and then you throw your stick off to the side when you're done. It's a lovely plant. Part of what I appreciate about the Nanking cherry in particular is its ability to tuck into so many different contexts. So right now I'm looking due south and so we've got uh, good morning light and then midday in the shade of these larches and then late day pretty much complete shade. So this is an only morning light context for this tree. It's growing just fine. It's not leaning or desperate for more light. Uh, so it'll grow in partial shade and put on a decent crop. This Night King cherry is almost in the same context as the Cornelian cherries that are behind it, quite a bit shadier. So larch, it's getting light right now, 
for warmth for the uh, flowering and the beginning of the fruit set, but during the vegetative phase of the summer, it's in almost, com not complete deep shade, but definitely dappled sunlight at most. And it'll put on a lighter crop, but the fruits tend to be bigger and sweeter. Less numerous, but more delicious. You can see some diversity in form happening here. In fact, this is a Brianna apricot seedling on the right, getting a little bit more upright and tall. The fruits are small and dense with the thick skin, so I'm comfortable with them getting taller. We can always just shake them and pick up fruit from underneath or put a tarp. And here's a really beautiful form of Nanking cherry kind of flanking these raised beds off to the east. Um, a little bit squat. They don't get super tall. This one I would guess is about eight feet tall, but maybe 10 feet wide. You can see to the south of it here is a dog rose. This is actually a cultivar dog rose that makes very large um, flowers and hips. Nice medicinal crop. A little bit challenging harvesting the Nanking cherry right in here, but what I'm trying to show here is that there's compatibility. The plants are adaptable, so they can have competition. I'll prune out the rose as needed, but the rose and the cherry can be right next to each other and they seem to both crop decently well and the rose leans into the cherry just a little bit. When you get a feel for the Nanking cherry in this landscape, you start to see that I have endeavored to put it absolutely everywhere. Edges of gardens, off in the distance, underneath the pine, you just see these tufts of white flower everywhere. There's a little one squirting off to the side giant spruce to the east and south, elderberry to the south and west, and there it is just growing and being beautiful. They don't absolutely love really wet foot conditions, so I wouldn't plant it where you hear, you can hear the sloosh of my feet. That would not be a good planting context, but I wanted to wander over here. This is a very, very wet part of the property, but in the process of hand digging some ponds, I had excess soil that we deposited around this spruce tree here, and the Nanking cherries planted on that deposit soil are actually quite happy. So the shade, they're very tolerant of the wetness they don't love, but here you can see the excavation of that pond deposited here is a fine enough context. They're quite happy. They should be able to crop beautifully right here. Here's a real fun part about this particular plant. They are rowdy from seed. In fact, I think mice and probably squirrels tuck the fruit into various spots and they can become randomly weedy plants. So here's one that just showed up in a nettle patch. Likewise, that friend over there. This one I may or may not have planted. I can't quite remember, but it's growing in the understory of the sea buckthorn. Super happy no matter where I put it. Last year we had a brutally intense freeze in mid-May that devastated most of the fruit for this whole region. I suspect anyone watching this channel within a few hundred miles of central New York probably experienced what we did. A really nice start to the spring and then a complete zeroing of all fruit, um, of the tree fruit. So we don't have, we didn't have any seed to uh, collect last year, except for this one very random microclimate at our friend's home between two houses in downtown Ithaca near the lake. And so we were able to collect a few thousand fruits and have beautiful carpets of little seedlings. We're gonna put those in air prune boxes and really try our darndest to grow them out. Uh, people really want this plant. I'd love to be able to say yes to that. They grow nicely in air prune boxes, so if you do get a good fruit set, save that seed. They grow true from seed. Almost everything you saw in this landscape are um, second or third generation collected from an original 10 bushes that I planted back in 2009. Those bushes have since died, so they're not very long-lived shrubs, but they can make, we're probably on their fourth or fifth generation of trees and shrubs from those, so very worthwhile. Uh, in multiple contexts, don't let them get their feet too wet, they don't love it, but shade or sun, they're fine. Um, just go wild with Nanking Cherry, wherever you can get them, give them a shot.